a Google update may strike. If your website goes down, then they may negotiate the offer and offer less money. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, all, all platforms try to do their absolute best to, you know, filter out just tie kickers, but, you know, inevitably you're going to get people that are just not serious in their buying the business. And but it's, it's really great to hear that you, you know, that you were ultimately happy with, you know, the process and, and you ended up finding, you know, the deal that you were looking for. And, uh, it was a, it sounded like a pretty relatively smooth process, especially if you didn't do any due diligence, which is a bonus. Hey everybody, Kristen Jacobson here and welcome to the Digital Dealmakers podcast. And today we have a very special guest with us, Georgie Todorov. Now, Georgie, just to give you a, a bit of a background about uh, Georgie. So Georgie is a self-taught entrepreneur and content creator. And he's been featured in some pretty big publications like Forbes and uh, Entrepreneur Magazine. And he previously built and sold his own content uh, site for uh, for six figures. And he's now created a uh, business called Create and Grow, which helps people build online businesses. So I'm very excited to have him as a guest on our show. And um, I, I met Georgie uh, a while back, back at uh, Affiliate World uh, Barcelona. And ever since, you know, it's been a, it's been a great journey uh, since, uh, since meeting him. So uh, welcome to the podcast and, and congratulations on being the first official guest on our, uh, on our podcast, man. Hey, Christine, it's a, such a great honor to be your first guest. Awesome, man. And um, for those who uh, may not know, uh, Georgie actually has his own podcast, which I uh, had a, a guest speaker on. So I definitely uh, give you a, a plug for your podcast as well and, and, and share that with, uh, with people that are watching this show too. Just a bit of a collaboration for you. Thanks, Christian. Yeah, you were my first guest on my podcast as well. Awesome. Awesome, man. So look, um, what I really wanted to do today in this podcast is you know, you've like you've gone from, you know, not knowing anything about SEO to learning about SEO and teaching yourself how to build a a content site from scratch. And you know, you've su successfully been able to actually sell that content site for you know six figures. So you know, really, what I'd like to do is just go through, you know, what the journey of that was like, and you know, the journey of building um, that content site, and you know, ultimately being able to actually sell it. So, you know, what were some of the key strategies that you employed to, you know, generate over a hundred thousand uh, organic uh, visitors, and and ultimately be able to successfully sell it? Yeah. Basically, I didn't uh, start with SEO with this website. Before that, I had been doing uh, SEO for clients and uh, I had a lot of experience. I was very confident and I knew exactly what I should do. Back then in 2021, it was a little bit easier than now. The Google updates were not so harsh like now and with uh, high quality content and backlinks, you could achieve a lot, basically. That was my focus. I didn't want uh, to do many things, but to focus on the most important things, content and backlinks. The key uh, success for me was that I wanted to do the job that most bloggers do for three or five years. I saw that something for them happened after the second year, the third year, after five, six years of blogging. I saw that they're getting traction, they're getting success. But uh, I wondered, okay, if I publish 500 articles for six months or 300 articles for six months, and if I build a few hundred, high, three or five years, if I do the same quantity of job, the same amount of job, just for six months, what would be the result of that? And that was my strategy. Okay, so it sounds like you really, you know, got into the industry, understood and reverse engineered, like what some of the best do and, 
you know, really just hyper-focused on things that really move the needle in terms of actually uh, building, building a business like this. Yeah, absolutely. Well, what's, um, like what sort of before that, like what kind of inspired you to even get into the online business world in the first place and specifically into content? Like you, yeah. before that, that's, you, that's you, a good you, question. Yeah. Back then I didn't, uh, even imagine that I will do a computer job, any computer job. So, uh. I was in the UK for a couple of months, working laboring jobs, uh, farming jobs, like picking up uh, vegetables and fruits for a couple of months. And it was uh, uh, not very pleasant experience because basically you work um, on harsh uh, weather conditions for very little money. Yeah, and when I get back to my country, I was wondering what I'm going to do. I don't want uh, to slave like that anymore. I'd like to uh, learn some skills and uh, to work something different. And I was looking for fields, for professions. So uh, programming wasn't for me. I hate math. And I'm, I just uh, bought a PHP course and I watched it for two days and I was sick of it. Yeah. And I was looking for another interesting thing and SEO grabbed my mind because the person who was uh, teaching in that SEO course explained it like that. You should like copywriting and you should be creative. I think I have and also I like to write essays when I was at school. So I decided I should give it a go. That was around 10 years ago. And I started uh, learning SEO. I was watching... Uh, and consuming a lot of content. Uh, this guy Randy Fishkin back then was super popular with his uh, on YouTube and probably I consumed all the videos. But SEO was super difficult to understand because it has many nuances and the information is not straightforward. So I was reading in forums, I was reading on Facebook groups and everybody is saying something different than the other person. So for a few years, I didn't have any confidence in myself to try SEO. I didn't want to do any job, uh, SEO job for clients as well, not to corrupt their websites. So for a couple of years, I was writing articles and doing just content. And after that, I started doing backlinks, doing link building. And after that, I combined both links and content. Yeah, that's a, that's very interesting because you know a lot of the a lot of the own, business owners that I talk to that you know operate uh, content sites and generally speaking in the SEO community, like I see that a lot of those um, a lot of those people are very sort of te technical orientated or mathematically orientated. And yeah honestly not that creative um in a sense so you know it's very interesting to hear that you you know sort of really really looked at this from a creative uh uh creative uh, aspect and yeah it sounds like you, you've mentioned a couple of times like content and link building um and those are the two you know sort of most important things that you know sort of helped you uh build your first success um, with your, your first content, uh, site throw my way. So, you know, with that being said, like, I mean, could you share some like insights into your approach in to SEO and link building that really, you know, contributed to the success of your, um, your previous. Do you want me to yourself? speak about the content or the links? Uh, both or wh whatever okay. you, wh whatever insights or approach you took to you know, the content and the link building. Um, okay, because content as, first. As, as, you meant, as you mentioned, you know, there's so many so many points of, like, conflicting information in, in this industry. And it's oh, now it's easier. Difficult. Yeah, it's very difficult to, you know, sort of see, okay, what actually works um, and what you've built and what you've been able to achieve is, like, obviously works because you've, you've done it. Back then it was even more difficult but nowadays you can find uh, proper information 
and uh, guidance. Okay, I will uh, tell you about uh, my approach with uh, creating content and backlinks. First, let's begin with content. Back then in 2021, AI wasn't so popular yet and so advanced like now. And uh, what I did was uh, to go to Upwork and hire writers. I was uh, hiring writers from native speaking countries such as uh, the United States, Australia, New Zealand, the UK, Canada, and that's it. And uh, those writers usually had uh, pretty expensive rates, such as eight cents per word, 10 cents per word, which is probably not so expensive uh, from first uh, look, but if you imagine that I order tens of thousands of words per week, it will end up a lot of money. So what I did was that. I uh, bargained with them that I can afford only four cents per word, which is $40 per uh, 1,000 words. And uh, I gave them the briefs for the articles. So they were getting the article half written, all the headlines, age to here, the next age to, the next age to. And on the top of that, I was recording a short video with Loom where I was speaking for three, five minutes straight. In this article, I want this. In this paragraph, I want you to mention this. In the next paragraph, I want you to include those statistics from this page. And at the bottom of the post, include those uh, five uh, frequently asked questions and answer them with uh, 50 words per frequently asked question. And end up with a short conclusion up to 50 words where the main thesis is this. And they were receiving the article and they were just straightforward starting writing. They didn't uh, spend any time researching the topic, uh, spending time to create their own brief or to check what competitors are writing on that topic. So it was a great uh, advantage for them because they saved so much time and energy of researching. So I was doing half of their job. But at the same time, it was good for me because I was doing this research from SEO point of view, from SEO perspective. So I was ensuring that they will hit the search intent. And after they finish the article, the article will be also very competitive. I was trying to create the best article for each topic. And this is how with uh, um, my approach, I managed to get it cheaper and uh, to get uh, my SEO perspective into every article. This is about content. Yeah, I mean, it's like, when, when I think about it, like, I mean, when, when, when were you doing this? Because like fr from, you know, from the time that you were doing this to like now, like there was so much grind and legwork that you had to do to be able to like actually produce content and now you know, you can pop up a brief and, you know, sort of give that sort of, uh, yeah, exactly. Like two seconds. Right. But, but you were like in the, in the grind doing it. Um, I was yeah, grinding, a lot, anyway. but now I wouldn't do the same never. And yeah. there is two, two reasons because first, even if I hire the same writers and I told, and I tell them, okay, we're going to do the same project and we're going to do the same type of work and I pay them fixed price again, they would be idiots if they don't use AI because AI is so helpful in content creation, in uh, research and everything. I don't believe there are many writers in the world that don't use ChatGPT and other AI tools. So now the approach would be much different to probably, if you want pure content without any AI in it, just hire writers uh, per hour and allow them to use only their brain and tell them that AI is not allowed to use. Or the other option is uh, to utilize AI and to use it for your advantage, but humanize it as well. Absolutely. And that's, that's actually very interesting when you think about it, because like, you know, when you were doing that, that wasn't that long ago, right? Yeah. So, so much has changed, you know, in a very short period of time. 
one thing that sort of pops in my mind is like when you were looking for those who were writing the content, like in terms of like actual ex- expertise and experience in the actual subject um, that they were writing about, like was that an important factor of like choosing? Absolutely not, because I was uh, the expert in those topics like blogging, make money online, SEO. That was the first uh, batch of all the articles, probably 200 articles were around those topics. So for every topic, I knew what should be in it. And when I checked the competitors, I got even clearer picture about what I want in this article, what would give me a, a competitive edge among the competitors. I just hired generalists because... If you hire someone who is uh, a specialist in this niche, then they will charge you a lot. I mean, like probably 20 cents per word or something like that, just because they understand a little bit of this topic. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. So like, let's say that you were doing this today, right? Um, Would you, and you were trying to build a site that, you know, you weren't, you didn't really have subject matter expertise in uh, that particular um, in that particular um, subject. Would you see the val- value in like hiring someone who like really does have expertise and experience in it? If you didn't, or or, or would you kind of try and use AI to like understand, or at least have a, have some sort of um, subject matter expertise in? in the content site that you're looking to build? Again, um, that's a difficult question because again, you don't, uh, you don't know how much more this uh, specialist specialist will charge you just because they specialize in that niche. If it's a doc website and this is the doc writer, I don't think that uh, it will be worth it because probably they will charge you five times more money. Yeah. Okay. That's very interesting. And so, you know, with that, so content side of things, um, you know, you really understood the, the subject and you, and you were able to provide like a system in a sense to those Absolutely, where, yeah. where, other, instructions. where others weren't really willing or even able to, you know, be able to provide like clear instructions. So you sort of arbitrage that, which is, which is uh, fantastic. So, in terms of the link building, though, I mean, with the previous site that you sold, uh, ThriveMyWay.com, like you had some incredible backlinks to some really high authority uh, uh, sites. So, you know, I'd love to sort of get your uh, get your insight in, in link building. Um, yeah, absolutely. First of all, I've been doing link building as a service for many years. I even worked uh, at SEMrush. Uh, and my job there was link building. So okay. I, I really understand it from every, yeah. every possible angle. Just want to explain that to the listeners. It's not, uh, some, some surprise that happened. And, uh, I used many different methods. For example, guest posting is, uh, was a very strong part of my game, link partnerships and also linkable assets building uh, many linkable assets and leaving them to sit still and some of them were picking up a lot of links during the months during the years i got links from bbc from forbes forbes brazil couple of links of um, from entrepreneur msn yahoo and all those links for free naturally to my linkable assets. Yeah, I mean, that's something like, if people are listening to this podcast right now, like, you know, the name drops that you you mentioned, like, they'd be like, give me the secret sauce, Georgie. Like, tell me how to do that. <laughs> Especially if you, you know, done that naturally. So like, what, what was some of the, you know, some of the methods that you were, you had, you said guest posting and uh, what, what else? Yeah, guest posting, it goes uh, together with the link partnerships because usually in one guest post, they allow you to include, let's say, two links. One link in the author bio with branded anchor going to your homepage and another link within the article. And 
it's natural to include a couple of more backlinks in the article referring to some statistics, for example, uh, linked to some relevant content, just to include some outbound links. And here comes the place for your partners that are in the same industry like you or neighboring industry. And uh, you are linking to useful pages from their websites. And when they do guest posting, they return the favor and they link back to your resources. So this is how you multiply the effort. And with one guest post, you make two links plus a couple of more links from partners. So could you run me through like just a simple practical example of how that would work? Like, um, for example, throw it my way. Yeah. Now, uh, for example, I publish a guest post on a, another website and I include links to my website, drive me away, my ex website. I sold it obviously. And, uh, you are my partner. You have your own website, christinejacobson.com. And you have some relevant articles, some statistical posts that are relevant to my guest post topic. So in some relevant paragraph, instead of linking to Wikipedia or linking to uh, Forbes or BBC, some famous website, I will link to a friend. I will link to you. After that, I will send you the link and I will tell, hey, buddy, I linked to you here. Here you go. And I rely that when you publish a guest post, maybe after one, two, three weeks, you will return the favor and you will link to me, to my website. Ah, okay. Interesting. So you would like post, uh, you, you would like link to, to a, yeah, like a, I guess a smaller blog in that sense or something. And then like, you would actually like reach out to the owner of that uh, blog and say, Hey, you know, I just released a, a guest post, uh, like I just released a post and, you know, linked you to, to, uh, to your site and sort of like started a conversation that way in a sense or like the it, conversation it, it, is already started actually and they're already uh, partners okay. and we know each other so it's right. not someone new that i'm trying to approach and give them a link to get their attention we have the deal for example and i know what they're looking for and they know as well so this is how it goes Okay, so you, it sound it sounds like you were really also good with like relationships um, too, which is you know something that may may not be something that uh, you know people in this space are, are you know really focused on or, or good at in a sense. Yeah, you are right, and uh, those conversations for link partnerships they are very exhausting because there is a lot of back and forth. They ask you, oh, which is this website? Let me check it. Give me a couple of hours. So the best uh, idea here is to hire a virtual assistant and outsource this job to them. And once you set the processes that they can follow, this job is really easy. So this is how I've been doing it. Sometimes I do it myself together with my assistant, but basically this is their job and I build processes for them to follow. Awesome. So, I mean, I might, uh, I might be asking some silly sort of like SEO related questions because it's, you know, not my, uh, area of expertise as you know, I mean, really my area of expertise is like helping people that are building content sites or any other sort of online business to, you know, actually sell, uh, their online business if they're, if they're looking to. Um, sort of hence why uh, we connected in the first place a, a while back. But, you know, I know that you uh, were able to successfully um, sell your, uh, your your content site to Thrive My Way. Um, and that was a very interesting uh, journey uh, going through that process. But could, you know, because it is a very complex um, sort of process. But, you know, could you walk me through, you know, how you navigated the the sale of, of that site and, you know, some of the things that, you know, sort of were a challenge and some of the things that you, you know, sort of learnt through the process of actually selling a content site and, you know, cashing in on the, on, on yeah. a, on a, I learned a lot deal. from that uh, process of trying to sell the website and eventually selling it. 
So first I was uh, decided, I decided that I'm going to sell through Empire Flippers. You were, you were working there back then, basically. Yeah, yeah that's where we first connected. <laughs> yeah, uh, but they offered me very low uh, evaluation and I was just shocked. I couldn't believe that this is possible. And I didn't agree with that. And I tried other brokers. I went to... And I agreed with you too. Hence yeah, I remember. I, yeah. I remember that. Um, I went to other brokers to test the waters. They are micro acquires, I think. Acquire.com. Just a couple of more. They gave me higher offers. But still, I thought that I could do better. And then I went to Flipper. And I, I asked friends, what do you think about Flipper? They said, no, 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 don't go there. It's terrible. They said many bad things, basically. And I was wondering why. The biggest player in the industry and everybody is so disappointed. And I went to read the reviews. So there were many one-star reviews about Flipper. And I studied them. And everybody said that their support doesn't answer. And that... Uh, you need premium service if you go there, which makes sense. So basically, those that were hating on Flipper were people that uh, didn't get attention, that didn't get the support from Flipper. And I checked that there is a possibility, an alternative to hire an agent from Flipper to buy the premium service for $600, I think and to have your dedicated uh, agent who will walk you through the whole process and will just hold your hand, basically. And this is what I did. I uh, bought the most expensive plans for $600. I got uh, my agent. He told me that we can um, list the website for more than $160,000 and see what will happen. That was in the beginning of July 2023, I think. So we listed it and I started getting many questions from different potential buyers. And at the same time, I was trying to sell the website on my own because I myself have many connections in the space and I were reaching out to my connections, asking them, hey, do you want to check this website? I'm selling it right now. And uh, I was very close to sell to one other company, which is very well known in our industry. And they are acquiring websites all the time. But uh, they uh, were late with a few days. And the other guy from Flipper bought the website. Okay, so that's a very interesting uh, journey because, like, yeah, I mean, as as you mentioned, you know, we first uh, connected while I was in a role with uh, Embar Flippers and, you know, not to, um, you know, not to sort of uh, downplay, like, what Empire Flippers uh, is really capable of, but, you know, they don't really, you know, when I, I remember, you know, when we first started really talking about the potential sale, like, it, the, the site was relatively new in a, in a way. Um, and you know, there was a, you know, there was a lot of, a lot of things where, you know, it really required like a very sort of special or like a, a very specific kind of buyer. Right. So, you know, the, I, I think the main differences was like with Empire Flip is they weren't entirely sure as to, you know, what, um, what sort of buyers they would have, but, you know, with Flipper, they've got such a large buyer pool um, and it's very much an open marketplace um, in a sense um, that, you know, you can really go, you know, aggressive with the asking price. Um, but it's, it's very interesting that you mentioned, you know, the sort of <laughs> the feedback of like, you know, when you're asking around the community around, you know, what, uh, you know, what do you think of Flipper? And, and a lot of people were like, no, 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 you don't want to go there. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it's very interesting because it's like, you know, I see a lot of sellers, you know, they want to go to the absolute cheapest option possible, which is basically just, you know, getting paid, uh, paying to just get on the platform. Um, but they have to do everything themselves and they've never sold a, 
business before in their life, right? So, you know, they they don't even upload like financials or, you know, they misrepresent the company. They don't really merchandise it properly. And then they wonder like, oh, well, like I'm not getting any interest. And it's like, well, yeah, because <laughs> you're not an expert in this. But you, you know, you saw beyond that and you were like, yeah, well, actually, I'm going to get someone who knows what they're doing um, in terms of selling a site and, you know, leverage on their expertise. So it was a very interesting um, process. What what did you find? What did you find being, you know, one of the biggest challenges in terms of like, you know, actually um, selling the site? Like what were some of the sticking points that you had to overcome? Honestly said, there were not many challenges because uh, the website is good. It had uh, decent content and amazing backlinks. One of the problems and my mistakes actually was that I was trying to sell during the summer, in the middle of the summer, July. Okay. So when I listed it for one listing price and on the second day I had this uh, buyer super interested in the website and he asked me, Hey, which payment method do you prefer? Like the first sentence. <laughs> and I was, what? <laughs> Here's my money. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I said, whatever I asked, I asked him, uh, whatever you want. I'm fine with everything. Yeah. I'm not going to stop. Whatever payment method you want to pay. Yeah. And, like, go and, for and then he went silent for three weeks. And I forgot oh. about him because there are many people on Flippa. Flippa is a great place because it has a larger buyer. Uh, pool, but there are so many people on Flippa that just ask. They just ask for Google Analytics. They just ask for information. They just try to learn something from you. And I thought, yeah. okay, this guy is one of them. But uh, then I dropped the price because after three weeks, I didn't sell it, and I wanted to acceler accelerate the the sale. And I spoke with my advisor Ashwin. Credit to Ashwin, by the way, he was a great guy, very helpful. And he told me, okay, we can make one drop. So if you want to make uh, a drop of the price, just one time. We are not doing many small drops. Just decide what is the minimum that you can sell. And I, I said, okay, I want to sell it for no less than $100,000. Absolutely. Because even a little bit more than that. And uh, he said, okay, let's. Um, listed for 125 and if someone approaches you you still have room to go a little bit lower we listed it two days later the same guy who had started this uh, funny conversation reached out and said hey sorry bro i was uh, on vacation for three weeks so <laughs> i'm back here let's finalize it that's my offer and i took the offer and the deal was done in four days four days no due diligence nothing he was super easy to do business with. And this made me to sell the website exactly to this person because he was easy going and he was also busy. He didn't have time to play around. There were a few more potential buyers that could pay more, but I was just feeling that they're more tense. They're harsh people to do business with. They could be uh, probably five weeks um, due diligence and during that time anything happens a google update may strike if your website goes down then they may negotiate the offer and offer less money yeah absolutely i mean all, all platforms try to do their absolute best to you know filter out just tie kickers but you know inevitably you, you're going to get people that are just not serious in the, in, in buying the business and but it's 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 really great to hear that you you know that you were ultimately happy with you know the process and and you ended up finding you know the deal that you were looking for and uh it was a it sounded like a pretty relatively smooth process especially if you didn't do any due diligence um which is a bonus yeah but my website was uh, super transparent about everything my p and l reports were great i gave the guy access to my Google Analytics, Google Search Console. Everything was so transparent that he didn't much, uh, didn't need much time to check. So they were checking the very uh, basic things like 
incomes from Mediavine, incomes from affiliates, sponsored posts, everything was perfect from my side. So that was easy. Awesome. So, you know, when, when, when did you actually end up uh, uh, selling the business? At uh, the end of July. So for four weeks, I think. Okay. So July. So, yeah, that was, um, that was a very interesting, like, like in a very good timing in, in that sense as well, because, you know, you know, as you know, you know, so late, uh, so sort of in December last year, you know, Google algorithm updates sort of like, yeah, <laughs> havoc a lot, you know, so exactly. I mean, in moving forward, like, you know, if someone's listening to this podcast and they're, you know, trying to start and grow their own content site, um, you know, what, what advice would you really give them? um right now in terms of actually growing their um their blog um in 2020 well you know it didn't change so much than before still high quality content and backlinks are very important no matter what other people say but you still need to uh see what works right now so obviously you need to have other channels of traffic. You can't rely only on Google. You should develop your social media pages. You should be good on TikTok, LinkedIn, uh, Pinterest, if it's your niche, food or travel, something like that. And Reddit as well. You should dominate those places as well and get traffic from them. And uh, this will help you as well for Google, because when Google see that your website gets traffic from other sources like YouTube, Pinterest, etc., this is hence why we're doing one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. So this right. is how the, the game changed. Basically, you need to treat your blog as a real brand in 2024 and ahead. Yeah, yeah. That uh, I mean, that makes sense from a you know general bit, uh, business perspective. You know, in my experience, but. You know, honestly, Georgie, like I, I talk to a lot of content site owners every single week and a lot of the time, you know, they they mention, you know, that that's something that they quote unquote should be doing, but just don't uh do it. So yeah, what what do you think the the hurdle is that or what do you think is, um stops most uh most um content site owners from actually doing that because it, they seem to be aware that that's something that they need to do generally but but they just don't do it as we said in the beginning of our conversation many of them are too technical and they just don't want to be the star of their blog i guess they don't want to show their face on camera or something and it's also uh, not so easy to produce good video content for TikTok and YouTube shorts. It's very tricky. I'm trying this now and I don't have good success, but uh, I hope that after a couple of months I will get better and I will get views. I will get traffic. So this is, uh, this is the journey for the next months, for the next years to be good on other platforms as well. Do you think also that there might be some sort of like sediment or sort of um, like idea that, you know, in the, in this particular space, particularly that, you know, the, the marketing of like starting a blog and it, it, it can be, it can come across or it can be perceived as like, you know, make money quick, sort of get rich quick by blogging sort of thing, like from from like residual, you know, sort of people that were like promoting something and blog and stuff like that. Like it's, it, it feels like there's a bit of a sense of like laziness in, in a sense from, from people that actually try and build a, a, a blog. Would, would, would you agree with that or? Uh, was the question actually? So like, you know, it, it seems like it's just like extra work or like an extra level of like, you know, really building a brand in that sense and you know would you agree that a lot of people that yeah. try and enter this space um just do it in the sense that they think that they can just make money sort of quickly and easily 
Or... Probably yes. Uh, probably they have watched uh, someone on YouTube that tells them, "Hey, it's super easy. You just buy this domain from Bluehost, and you buy hosting. And after that, you go to ChatGPT, you produce 100 articles, you post them, and uh, after 30 days, you rank for some keywords, and you monetize, and you make money. But uh, in reality, it doesn't happen like that. And you should look into that as a part-time job, at least." as a long-term project because it's not so easy but yeah i guess that some people are getting false information and taking this road yeah yeah i, tend, I definitely agree with you it, like and that's what i that's what i really like and respect about you geordie is that you know you really treat like whatever you do as like a real business like and and you don't sort of do uh, a half half-baked job on it like if you if you go for something like you're really going to give it all give it your all and actually treat it like a real business rather than just uh sort of like a you know a hobby in a sense which is something that i really really respect about you man so you know with um with that being said like you know we've spoken a lot about how much change has been in this particular industry and so I mean, how do you how do you stay ahead of the curve with like technology and AI and algorithms and you know also um, really what the consumer um, of this sort of uh, content really you know expects? Like how do you, how do you stay ahead of the curve? Well, first about let me tell you about AI. For one year, probably I was in denial. I thought, okay, this is hype. AI can't be so good to produce uh, blog articles. And I was just ignoring it for one year. And during that time, it developed more and more. And at the end of 2023, I said to myself that it's the moment that I have to start. Yeah, I said to myself that I have to finally study how AI works and to use it in my processes. So you really like initially, you know, like most people, we sort of like, ah, oh, yeah, it might just be a fad, you know, it's like not really a serious thing, but yeah, because yeah, there's so it, much hype in other in other stuff, and yeah. I thought this is one of those things that are overhyped. Just like um, they've said for, uh, I heard a joke from a a friend in the SEA community that, well. For every year, for the last 10 years, they've said SEO is dead. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, it, but it still hasn't happened. So, you know, okay. So really like you, you really try and stick to fundamentals, but if there's something that keeps popping up all over and over that makes, you know, business sense, like you just say, okay, right, okay I'm going to learn this. I'm going to explore it and, and really, you know, sort of look yeah, at. Yeah, you uh, have to be very adaptive to the changes that are happening and see what works now and realize that what works now probably will not work forever. So now uh, you see that Parasite SEO is working very well. If you publish an article on LinkedIn, probably it will rank super well and you'll get many eyeballs to this article. If you publish something on your own subreddit, if you create subreddit and publish your content there, it will rank as well, but I guess that it will not be the case after two years, for example. So you should uh, see what works now and use it until it stops working. Yeah, that's uh, the super valuable advice um, for those that are listening. So, yeah, if there's anyone or any person that you really find value out of, like you know what, um, what. Um, you know, what sort of content or like, uh, you know, strategies that are working today that you've really, you know, uh, leveraged on? Like, is there anyone in particular that you that you follow or listen to that uh, you find a lot of value of um, from from what they what they're saying? Um, yeah, there are uh, some people, some communities that I'm following. For example, I've been a member in this uh, Swag group, Traffic Think Tank. It's a paid community of marketers and from other members, I have learned a lot. 
and um, I am following some YouTube channels as well. For example, Charles Flood gives uh, good advices, good advice about SEO. And uh, there is one other guy, but he is not posting much recently. Glenn also from Detailed. So, yeah, there are not so many people. There are a few. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I would imagine that they, you know, don't have a huge following or not really well known, but, you know, what they're really talking about is, is, is very practical and actually like, you know, provides results, if I'd imagine. Exactly. Yeah, you are right. All right. Awesome. Well, look, we're, we're going to wrap this up in a minute, but, um, you know, being, being an entrepreneur yourself, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of highs and lows, um, in, in the journey of being an entrepreneur, like what would you say some of the, you know, some of the most memorable, um, highs and lows that you've had uh, throughout your journey, um, that you'd like to sort of share and what, what did you learn from them? Lows, um, <laughs> about loss, I don't know because, um, uh, I don't really remember about loss. about highs. When I started seeing uh, that Thrive My Way is getting traffic at the beginning, in the first months, and hitting 100 organic traffic in the first six months, and after that, 300,000 organic traffic, and getting all those links naturally to the website, and receiving 30 guest post requests per day, so many brands asking for partnership, that was great. Yeah. So it went from like, you know, really doubting if this is working and like the path that you're on is, you know, going to, you know, actually result in anything to like, you know, just clicking and then it's all of a sudden like, you know, rock and rolling, you know, and that's you know, having the entrepreneurial doubt, I guess. You could yeah, say. but not exactly. I was uh, confident that I'm going to succeed with this project. When I was starting, I knew that, uh, I have to put a lot of effort. I have to put a lot of resources in terms of money, energy, time, everything. And my goal was to succeed with it. I knew that whatever I do, I have to succeed with this project. And this is what I'm doing now with my new project. I'm looking at it like a long-term project. I'm not going to sell it. I'm not planning to sell it. I'm just growing it. If it doesn't make any money in the first year, that's fine. No problem. I continue. Second year, fine. No problem. I continue pushing it. So eventually it will get traction and it will succeed. So it sounds like you like, you just, you know, at some point, if you just keep doing the right things for a long enough period of time, you know, you're going to win at some point. Yeah. The law of consistency. Yeah, I love it, man. And so what what you said you're working on something now. Like what is it that you're working on? Like uh you know, here's here's your chance to do a plug on on what you're what you're working on and uh what, what you're doing uh, at the moment. Yeah, as you can see the roll banner behind me. Yeah, Create and I grow. see that I need this to is... do myself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I love I love the uh promotion. Um createandgrow.com is my new project, my new website. And uh, the goal there is uh, to treat it as my personal brand and I will use it to sell my services, to sell consultations, to uh, sell my courses. I have two courses that I've been selling and also to get brands uh, for sponsorship, basically to make money, to teach others, to get clients. So that's my business now. Awesome. Besides man. of that... I have other smaller sites that I'm developing and trying to test some things on them, trying to monetize them, etc. Awesome, man. So you've got createandgrow.com uh, and you've got the Create and Grow show, uh, Create and Grow show, which I'm uh, definitely going to uh, pop a link on this uh, podcast episode below for those that are interested in diving into um, more of the you know, strategies and, and methods that, uh, George is using. And I, you know, briefly, uh, checked out some of the episodes and you're providing a huge amount of value, uh, in those, in those, uh, episodes. 
Um, if someone, you know, really wants to reach out and, you know, sort of look at um, how they could work with you, like where, where's the best place for them to uh, connect with you? Yeah, the best place is LinkedIn. I'm there every day. So if you want to reach out to me, send me an invite on LinkedIn, send me a message and I can't miss it. Awesome. And he's a great guy too. He's, um, you know, very, very friendly, uh, very, uh, very, you know, willing to help, uh, those that are looking to succeed and, you know, it's, it's great to, you know, have, uh, have you as a friend and, you know, to have you as a guest and, um, hopefully, uh, people that'll listen to this episode. Uh, get Thanks Christian. Well. Likewise. I'm waiting for you in Varna yeah. Yeah. at the end of April. Yeah. where you'll be a speaker here at our local event. I'm looking forward to it too. It'll be my first time in Bulgaria and, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to meeting the, meeting the community there. It's, uh, it's one like a week. lot of fun time. So yeah, one week you'll have some memories, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate you jumping on and, uh, really appreciate you, um, dropping some, dropping some really valuable insights on, on this podcast, man. And, uh, appreciate, uh, appreciate everything that you do. Thank you for having me, Christian. Have a good evening. Awesome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.